You're watching Denver 7 News at 7 a.m. Aurora's top prosecutor launches a new investigation involving this disturbing video showing Aurora police wrongfully detaining a black family. Plus, lawmakers leave the Capitol without reaching a deal on your next stimulus package. That's an starter. I've told them, come back when you when you are ready to give us a higher number. President Trump announces he'll be stepping in. And he served our country. So when his home started to crumble, the community rushed in to help. The impact your generous donations have had on this local veteran. Good morning, I'm Katie LaSalle and welcome to Denver 7 News. And I'm Micah Smith, thanks for joining us. You want to get outside early today, we're in store for a hot one, Katie. Oh, that is right. Good morning, Micah, good morning everyone. It is a beautiful start to our weekend, plenty of sunshine, a bit hazy over the metro area. Sign of things to come later on. We're expecting our temperatures to soar to the mid and even upper 90s. So a very toasty afternoon, but right now we're at 73 degrees in Broomfield, 64 Aurora and Boulder. Pretty pleasant and cool up into the mountains. Dillon only at 42 degrees, 40s currently from Gunnison up through Steamboat Grand Junction, heating up to the low 60s currently. But out and about across the Denver area for today, expect a mix of sun and clouds. By lunchtime, 90 degrees. It's going to be dry across the Front Range and Plains. And this afternoon, 95 by 3 o'clock. Your climate calendar for today, typically our highs are right around 89. We're expecting 96 today, but not looking at record heat this afternoon. But some really toasty conditions will continue. And then a little bit of a cool down will take you through the full forecast still to come. All right, looking forward to it, Katie. Today, a local group of pastors is demanding the Aurora Police Department take action against the officers seen in this video. The officers wrongfully detained a black family holding four kids at gunpoint and handcuffing them on the hot pavement. This after a license plate reader mistook their car for a stolen motorcycle out of Montana. Today, the Greater Metro Denver Ministerial Alliance will push the police department and city leaders to fire the officers involved. Now, this comes as the DA's office announces its plans to investigate whether or not the Aurora police officers in that video committed a crime. Denver 7 Sean Toll joins us. Sean, the DA, the DA is looking into whether or not criminal charges are warranted. Yeah, that's right, Micah. And prosecutors say they're investigating whether or not any of these officers committed a crime when they pulled over a black family thinking they were in a stolen car and they were not. The family was handcuffed, ordered to the ground. The incident happened the morning of August 2nd in the parking lot of a shopping center near Buckley and East Iliff Avenue in Aurora and has since garnered national attention. The latest incident involving Aurora police to do so. And the district attorney, George Brockler, says witness accounts of the scene were concerning and he wants to determine if criminal charges are warranted. And a DU expert tells Denver 7 charges in a felony menacing are possible because guns were pointed at kids. That, that is something you could probably be charged with criminally. Um, so there are, there are crimes of threatening uh, with a weapon. Uh, so I can look up the details of that um, for Colorado. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there would be a Colorado statute uh, section that makes it an offense to um, threaten someone with a weapon. Now, Aurora's new police chief, Vanessa Wilson, says she's already launched an internal affairs investigation, but is also cooperating with the DA's office. Back to you guys. Sean, thank you. The Colorado State University's athletic director announced he has paused indefinitely all football related activities because of accusations of racism and verbal abuse. Athletic director Joe Parker says those quote troubling allegations are among CSU's athletic administration, specifically those in the football program. Parker says quote Colorado State University is committed to being an anti racist university and we will not tolerate any behavior or climate that goes against that core value. And this comes just days after the university's president announced she will be launching an investigation over reports that football coaches told players not to report COVID-19 symptoms and claims players were threatened with shortened playing time if they quarantine. Some players we spoke with earlier this week defended their coaching staff, saying they make players a top priority. The Westwood neighborhood in southwest Denver should be known for its colorful murals, cultural diversity. Instead, 
It's known for its high crime rate. Just last week, five people were shot in the area and one died. Its violent crime rate is nearly 170% higher than surrounding neighborhoods. That's why Denver police selected the area for a community-based crime reduction grant. For the past two years, DPD has been studying the social factors contributing to the high crime rates. Now they're getting ready to submit their proposal to the Department of Justice for how they would like to partner with community groups to address it. For me, it's, it's, it's addressing the core issues. Um, again, it, it's those, uh, you know, those disparities that exist with um, all sorts of things, income levels, education. This is certainly something that we can't do as a police department by ourselves. We need the community's help. We need the community's involvement. After getting approval for their program, DPD is hoping to start implementing it this fall. Well, all is quiet now in the halls of our nation's capital after lawmakers adjourned without reaching a deal on a new stimulus aid package. Democrats are demanding billions of dollars for state and local governments to extend weekly $600 unemployment checks, which expired last week. But Republicans say those payments, they're too high and discourage people from going back to work. So they want more targeted relief. Late last night, President Trump says he plans to step in extending those payments. We're going to enhance unemployment benefits through the end of the year. So unemployment benefits will be, that's a big one, will be uh, brought out to the end of the year and defer student loan payments and forgive interest until further notice. And again, that's the president saying he will defer student loans and forgive interest indefinitely, as well as extend eviction moratoriums. Well, one of the few things lawmakers can agree on is extending the Paycheck Protection Program. But as negotiations stall for a new deal, a heads up for small business owners that today is the deadline to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. There is still money available since the start of the program, which was in early April as part of the CARES Act. Over $520 billion in funds have been distributed to more than 5,400 businesses. Right now, tens of thousands of people, potentially a quarter million, are celebrating at the annual Sturgis Rally in South Dakota. The annual bike rally is so popular that here in Colorado, several hours away, law enforcement are increasing drunk driving patrols. In South Dakota, one poll found 60% of people really wanted to cancel the rally, but businesses pushed to keep the party going. We have asked all of our employees to wear masks. That's your employees, but yes. not the public. No, no. Do you think you get pushed back if you try to do that? Definitely. We get pushed back for even wearing masks. This rally lasts more than a week. It ends on August 16th. This morning, Colorado's coronavirus numbers do seem to be improving. 450 cases were reported yesterday. That's not ideal, but it's certainly better than two weeks ago when 600 was the standard. The number of hospital beds in use by coronavirus patients in Colorado dropped again. 317 beds are currently being used. We've been hovering in the low 300s for the better part of last month. That's about a quarter of Colorado's total ICU capacity. Well, today, airports across the state will be getting a special delivery of masks. The Colorado Aviation Business Association and Angel Flight West is partnering with DIA to host a FEMA mask airlift. Volunteer pilots will deliver more than 300,000 masks to airports across the state to make even sure that even rural areas have proper protection against this virus. They'll be taking off from Centennial Airport this morning. Denver will move forward with selecting a contractor for the 16th Street Mall renovation despite calls to redirect funds. A petition to divert $33 million to Denver Public Schools has more than 3,000 signatures. However, a spokesperson for the city says there's no plan to divert funds from the project, and it's not an option due to local, state, and federal agreements in place. I wouldn't mind the money being diverted to schools. I wouldn't mind the money being diverted to social services. Construction is set to begin in late 2021, and according to the city, the project is expected to create 1,500 jobs. Denver 7 is getting results. Just 48 hours after residents in Denver's Baker neighborhood contacted Denver 7 for help, saying they were fed up with frequent car crashes off First and Cherokee, the city installed some new stop signs. The intersection used to be just a two-way stop. Well, now it is a four-way stop. The Denver Department of Transportation and Infrastructure also replaced the other two stop signs to make them larger. 
As a local Vietnam veteran gets older, it gets tougher to do things, especially maintenance around the house. And it's why a Lone Tree community came together to give a veteran's crumbling home some much needed repairs. As Denver 7's Addy Guajardo shows us, your donations through Denver 7 Gives are helping finish the work. So, Vietnam Awards. These medals take West counts back in time. That's Special Forces, though. Counts served three years in the U.S. Army Special Forces as a combat medic during the Vietnam War. He's the kind of guy that crawls out under fire to wound his soldiers and drags them back to safety. A respect for a fellow veteran and friend. All right, you ready? Yeah. Left foot. Ooh. It's how Mike Peterson noticed Wes needed help. The roof was in terrible condition. Paint job was bad. A job with a cost. I didn't have the money, frankly. And labor. You kidding me? I'm crippled. Out of Wes's reach. It's why Peterson and a few church volunteers came together and repainted the home, added a fence, and replaced the roof. An estimated $24,000 expense for free. High definition shingle and, um, you know, all new flashing around the skylights, new new venting. Volunteers chipped away at the checklist. The way we work, we uh, we work for five minutes and sit for 15. The list of repairs outside are almost done, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done inside. You know, it's, it's actually worse than it looks. Um, it's pretty stained. Our Denver 7 viewers saw your story when we did it and they wanted to help. So Denver 7 Gives is donating a $500 oh. gift card to help repair the water damage inside your home. Goodness, what a pleasant surprise, I'm overwhelmed. It's overwhelming. It is. What a surprise and it just uh, shows that people in this uh, city and in this this state are unbelievable. A gift of kindness. They did an excellent job. Wes can enjoy as he sits outside and takes in the gift of life. Addie Guajardo, Denver 7.